So earthquakes are a uh, result from like fault movement. So if you remember from earlier, there is uh, the there are the tectonic plate boundaries. So all plate boundaries are faults, but not all faults are plate boundaries. So the motion of the tectonic plates can actually result in um, faults appearing uh, next to it and not necessarily at the boundary. And there's uh, three main types of faults, or you can consider it four. Um, so tension, which is like pulling apart, can result in a normal fault uh, over here. And compression, which is the opposite, can result in a reverse fault. So you can see there's the foot wall and the hanging wall. So the way I like to remember it is the hanging wall has the um, longer side on top. So it looks like it's trying to hang on to the foot wall. And normal fault is like, it looks more like natural, I guess, if that's a way to remember it. So it just kind of just slides apart, while reverse fault has to be forced up. And a reverse fault, once it's forced up enough, it can actually form a thrust fault. So that's when the hanging wall get, goes so far over the foot wall that it's literally on top. And the um, last main type of fault would be strike slip fault. That results from a shearing force, which is like the side by side force. And uh, if you recall, that is similar to the uh, transform plate boundary. And that's why I mentioned earthquakes back there. So this little diagram, um, there are these horse and graven. So these names aren't important, um, but the important part is um, to show how normal faults can result in different landforms, uh, such as these rifts. And it's not necessarily only earthquakes that result. So uh, if you guys live in California, like I do, then shout out to you. Um, but these are the main faults in California. California is, uh, very known for its earthquakes. And the most famous fault would be the San Andreas Fault. It is 750 miles long and it's a strike slip fault, uh, which means, whoops. Yeah, which means it uh, results from the side to side movement of the plates. And so here are just some earthquake terms. Um, here's the focus of the earthquake. That's also known as the hypocenter, and that's where the stress is released. So uh, how, how this works is that the two sides um, are held together by friction, and sometimes when the plates move, there, uh, there can be a lot of energy released uh, once the friction is overcome in certain areas. And this energy is uh, represented in these little concentric circles over here. And the epicenter is directly above the focus. And so it kind of just maps where the earthquake is with respect to the landforms and the cities. And uh, if you guys uh, live where there are a lot of earthquakes, you're probably familiar with aftershocks. So aftershocks um, are when there are multiple smaller earthquakes after the initial large one. And the last main focus would be liquefaction, which is actually kind of scary. So in this picture, um, there is a car that has sunk into the ground because of an earthquake. So how this works is originally you have sediment that is structured in this way, and it is filled with water. And so it can support like a building like this. But when the when an earthquake happens, uh, this structure is destroyed and a bunch of water can flow in between the sediments. And that can make the entire uh, thing kind of uh, liquid-like. So the building is no longer supported and it kind of wobbles like this. And the last stage would be when the sediments kind of settle down and so there's a lot of water on top. So so the building gets stuck like in the ground like this and there's water above. So yeah, this is kind of scary. I don't, I don't hope any of you guys live through this ever. And seismic waves are those concentric circles here from earlier. They just, um, there's how the energy is released from an earthquake. 
So there are three main types of seismic waves, and this is ordered from fastest to slowest. So primary waves are P waves travel uh, the fastest. So they travel through um, any also solid, liquid, or gas. And um, in air, they're actually sound waves, so they move at the speed of sound. And this diagram shows P waves on top. Um, this might be kind of hard to visualize, but it's kind of like a spring, so it moves longitudinally. And um, if you just imagine each of these lines as, um, as parts of a spring, you can kind of see um, how it would uh, move. And the second type of seismic wave is the secondary wave. This is slightly slower and it can only travel through solids. So it cannot travel through liquids or gases. And it looks actually S-shaped, which is a nice way to remember it. So it moves in an up and down manner like this. The last type of wave is the surface wave. This is also called L waves and they uh, travel at the surface. So that means they are the most damaging because all of the uh, buildings and people are on the surface of the earth. And here's a little diagram of the uh, movement of the waves. So P waves are shown in yellow. You can see they can travel through any part of the earth, uh, while S waves, which are shown in black, are blocked by the liquid outer because they can only travel through solid. Um, but there are also, um, you know, P waves also get deflected by this uh, liquid. So yeah, you can see even if it goes through, it gets like a little wonky. And over here, um, where it gets deflected, there is a shadow zone. So that is where there are no direct P waves. And uh, this shadow zone can also be used to uh, determine how big the core actually is uh, based on its size and location. And the last topic would be magnitude and intensity scales. So magnitude scales, uh, which are uh, the Richter scale and the moment magnitude scale, um, they uh, measure the amount of energy that the earthquake actually releases, while the intensity scale, which is this one, um, can measure the actual shaking that is felt from the earthquake. So the Richter scale is from 1 through 10. Uh, it is log-based, so that means that a magnitude 5 earthquake would be 10 times stronger than a magnitude 4 earthquake, and it rates the actual size of the seismic waves that I mentioned from earlier. And so the Richter scale is the most famous scale. So um, and uh, these two scales are less well known, but they're also used. And so this is the Mercalli intensity scale. It's, it goes from 1 through 12, but in Roman numerals, because why not? And it rates the actual damage that's caused. Um, so this is consistent with the definition of intensity scale, because uh, that just, that rates the shaking and uh, uh, what actually results from the earthquake. So here's a nice little schematic of the Mercalli intensity scale uh, because it is and it is uh, not as the Richter scale. So the last uh, important scale is the moment magnitude scale and it rates the actual amount of energy that is released. That is similar to the Richter scale in that it measures uh, the actual earthquake itself. Okay, so now 